Well, welcome everybody again to another week, and it's an honor and a privilege to have everybody join together to, to lift up God's holy word and, and to worship Him and to just recognize His presence in our lives. Um, and, and again, welcome to Body of Christ Bible Fellowship. Uh, today we'll go over a couple of announcements before we get started, as we always do. Um, again, I want to I want to remind every American citizen that has has the ability to vote. Go and register now. Do not wait for November. Do not put this off. Go and do this now and exercise your right as an American citizen yes. to, to elect leadership in this country that reflects your beliefs and, and, and what you stand for as a Christian. Um, and and, and that, that, is, that is so important right now uh, that, that, that we acknowledge that. Uh, because there is a growing number of, 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 of people that are elected right now that do not reflect our, our beliefs and our, our values as, as Christians. So again, go and register to vote. You have uh, technology at your disposal now. Look up your, 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 uh, uh, the, the person you want to vote for. Look up their voting record. Yeah. See where they stand on yeah. topics like abortion and, yeah. and gay marriage and, and, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. See where they stand on that and let their voting record be what yes. you use in determining who you yes. vote yes. for. Yes. Not what they're saying because right. words, talk is yeah. cheap. Yeah. Uh, and politicians, that's just the nature of the game. Yeah. Man. They're going to tell you what they think you want to hear. So check their voting record and use that as a basis uh, to, to determine how you vote either way. Uh, so do that. That and, 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 and exercise your American right to vote. Uh, secondly, uh, please keep in prayer our community outreach for, for October 31st uh, at 5 p.m. on 2nd Street in, in Lawrenceburg. We're going to, to, to be there fellowshipping and, and talking with those in the community about Jesus, giving out clothing, and, and having a warm meal. Uh, so, so again, anyone that, that, that is available, please uh, come out and, and join us there. Uh, we want to welcome everyone that's online as well, our, our EFAM, I've heard it called. So, so again, God is doing a lot uh, in, in this time, and, and it's exciting to be a Christian right now because yes, even though it may be chaotic, you know the God that you serve, yes, and yes, Jesus yes, Christ yes. has all things held together. So we were, we're going to praise Him, and we're going to celebrate the truth that He brings uh, to us. Um, also, if you want to join our, our emailing list, uh, please go to BOC underscore Bible Fellowship at iCloud.com. Send in your prayer requests, praise reports. Uh, we have a, a committed group here at this church that, that lift those issues up daily uh, and pray for them. And God answers those prayers, I mean, all the time. So if you have any need, please use that resource. Also, you can go to our YouTube channel and, and subscribe there, uh, Body of Christ Bible Fellowship, same name there again. And you can watch any of our services from time past and you can send those services out uh, as you see fit. So those are two resources right there that you have available to us. Um, welcome everybody that's on Facebook. And, and again, just everybody that's brought together to us today. It, it really is. It's a blessing uh, to know that, that, that we have uh, a lot of people that, that, that love Jesus and want to hear about his truth and his word. Um, so as we get started today, we're going to start with the Lord's Supper as we always do. Um, but before we get started, please join with me in a moment of prayer. Father God, we come before you today humbly and thankfully, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you have allowed us to make it through another week, Lord. And in Jesus Christ's name, Father, please forgive us of our sin. Yes. Lord, we give that to you and we are sorry where we have fallen short of your grace, Lord. But, but we know that you are just to forgive us from all unrighteousness. So, Lord, we, we give that to you and, and, and please allow us to drop any shame, any guilt that's associated with that. And, and Lord, we ask for you to, to just indwell our hearts today in Jesus Christ's name. Open the eyes of our hearts today, yes. Father, as we lift up your scripture, Lord, and, and we seek for your presence, your Holy Spirit, to just indwell this service 
Lord, and every person that hears your word today, Father, let them be pricked in their heart, Lord, and let them come into a relationship with you in Jesus Christ's Amen. name. Lord, Father, as we partake of this communion, Lord, the Lord's Supper, Lord, let us do it in, in, in truth, Lord, and let us not come falsely before you, Lord Jesus. We we celebrate what you've done at the cross, Lord, and, and we, we, are, we are so thankful uh, that, that you are coming back uh, for us again in Jesus Christ's name. So, so Lord, just, just allow us to keep proclaiming your death until you come, Lord. And, and Lord, we ask that you uh, fill us spiritually and physically throughout this service. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. All right, all right, all right. Do you need some help? Oh, no, I got you. Okay. Pass that. Okay. There you go. Two weeks. I'm thirsty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have to wet your Yes, sir. I do. Thank you. Same. Yes, ma'am. I will. Absolutely. I guess I'm doing this right. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, our scripture today that we're going to go to is out of Luke 22. We're going to go to verse 14, starting uh, with our communion this morning. Luke 22, 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and brake it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. to our spiritual songs and hymns uh, this morning. And uh, the first song that, that we will go to uh, will be uh, Raise a Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Yes. 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 
this. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Praise your name. Praise your hallelujah. Everything inside me. Yes, Lord. I praise the hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. Yes, Lord. I praise the hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Praise it like a bear. Yes. Praise 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Awesome. Praise God. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. The devil's got no hold on me. Praise God. All right. Yes. So before we get into our message, we'll go into our, our tithes and offerings this morning. Um, and before we do that, again, please join with me in a moment of prayer. Lord Jesus, we come to you this morning, Father, and, and Lord, we, we ask that you bless those that can give. Lord, bless those that cannot, Father, and, and use every single dime according to your purpose, Lord yes. Jesus. Allow this to, to just indwell uh, everyone's heart, Lord. And, and again, just, just bless us today as we lift up spiritual sacrifices mm -hmm. in your name, Father. And we ask for your presence among us while we have this service. In Jesus mm -hmm. Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 That one's got no hold on me. Oh my Hallelujah. goodness. There we go, man. <laughs> Love it, 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 uh, mm -hmm. uh, our start this morning in God's Word. And as we turn oh, there, as we turn to Ephesians chapter 1, think of this. Are you sealed? Are you, what? Are you sealed? Sealed. Do you have a seal upon you? Because in the Word of God, there is a seal that God gives His people. There is a specific seal. And this seal has many different aspects to it. A lot of people look at a seal and they only think of ownership. That's the only thing they think of. They say, okay, I see that seal. That must belong to that person. I was talking uh, to, a, to a man um, a few weeks ago and, and, and this, this subject came up. He had, he had taken uh, an ADT sign out of his neighbor's yard and had planted it in his own yard so that that seal would deter criminals because they would think that his house was protected from that security company. Yeah. Many Christians do the same thing today. They want the seal of God, and they want to plant the sign in the yard, yeah. but they truly don't really understand the gravity of having a seal from the almighty and living God of the universe. So today we're going to talk about the different aspects of being sealed by God. And, and, and again, those aspects are authority, authenticity, uh, security, and ownership. All four uh, are talked about in the Word of God and, 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 and dictate a true, truly being sealed by God. You not only want the sign in your yard. You also want that. You also want that security behind it, uh, because again, if we do not have any substance, no authenticity, no authority, or, or no ownership, then all it is is false security. That's right. And when the and when 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 the thief comes in the middle of the night, now you are in a pickle, because now they walked right by that sign. Eventually, know that 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 your faith is much like this sign. Eventually, the enemy will walk right past that sign and see if there's any substance behind it. Yeah. It is coming um, and rapidly approaching as we talk about these things. So uh, as we go into Ephesians chapter 1, we have to understand what Paul is doing here. He's writing to a church in Ephesus that he spent three years standing up. And he's in prison when he's writing this, this letter to them. He's locked up in chains and he's writing to the churches in Ephesus. The first three chapters of Ephesians are about your position in Christ. He's writing to them, giving them assurances about what it means to be a Christian and how God sees them, so to speak. The last three chapters are about uh, uh, adapting and, and using that information in their life. So we're going to talk about uh, the, the seal of God, and then we're going to, to get to where it relates to us today. So in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, reads this way, In whom you also trusted Jesus Christ, 
After that, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that, you believed. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, until the praise of His glory. Amen. Now let's think about that right there. That, that, that promised Holy Spirit right there. Um, that, 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 that ownership that comes from God. When you first believed and you heard the gospel message, Something changed in your heart. Whether yes. you know it or not, there was a change that happened that is more powerful than anything in the universe. Yes. God has touched you. God has moved in your heart. And now the living God, Jesus Christ, through His Holy Spirit, now He indwells inside of you. And no longer are you pulled away by, by, by sin and by, by doing wrong things and, and all of these lists of things that Paul gives us right here. But now you have a righteous seed, a seal of God inside of you that is not just for security, but also has authenticity. Yeah. Uh, in, in Galatians 5.25 uh, uh, Paul, or 5.23 excuse me, uh, Paul gives indicators of what authentically being changed by the Holy Spirit would look like. He says that, that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these, there are no such law. So if you have been authentically changed by the Holy Spirit, these nine attributes will become welling up in you. Jesus tells the woman in Samaria, He says you'll have living water and you'll never thirst. Amen. You'll Amen. never thirst. So when you have that authentic change of God inside of you, you've got more than just a sign sitting in your yes. yard. You've got God yes. right in with you. You have been united in Christ. He says that He is a rec He reconciles that relationship with God at that moment of salvation. When you heard the word of truth, the gospel that has been preached to you the first time. Whenever you go and, and that preach, the word that he uses there means to proclaim. It, yes, you, you come to church and we hear preaching and things of that nature, but all of us proclaim the gospel. Yes. Everywhere we go, we're throwing little gospel seeds out there and we have no idea how, when one of those things is going to hit. You know what I mean? And when, because because Jesus says in John chapter six, he says that that, that when he, he's just fed five thousand grown men and their wives and children, possibly a crowd of about twenty thousand people with five fish and or five five loaves of bread and two fish. Okay, so the next day after they saw this, they they rushed Jesus, they bum rushed him, and they're like, "We're going to make you king right now." And Jesus is like, "No, can't do that." So what does Jesus do? He's like a boxer, man. He's very strategic, so he slips back out into the wilderness. He goes up onto the mountain by himself, indicating that sometimes you need to be alone with God. Right. So Jesus peels back up into the wilderness, and even his disciples at this time uh, don't even, they have to wind up crossing the Sea of Galilee by themselves. They get hit by a storm, and we all know what happens there. They accept him on, and the storm is calmed, and they, they immediately are brought to the shore. The point I'm trying to make is the people that were there, that got fed by the by the five loaves and two fish, they followed Jesus around uh, the, the lake. Fourteen miles was the trip. They followed him around on foot. They get over there, and and, and they begin to ask Jesus um, a, a couple of questions. They, they, they ask him, uh, 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 when are you going to do another miracle? That's what he's asking. The, the, the Son of God has literally just fed 5,000 grown men with two fish and five loaves, and they walk around in, in a day's time, and they're asking for another sign. And Jesus says, you didn't even get it. I've already showed you what it is. The purpose for the miracle, the, the, the message behind the message, praise God. He yeah. says, I am the bread from heaven. When we take yeah. the Lord's Supper, yeah. that is what we are doing. We are recognizing that Jesus is the bread that came down from yeah. heaven. And he yeah. says, anyone that comes to me, he says, everyone that comes to me, the Father will draw. That's what he says. He says, everyone that comes to me, the Father will put a draw on them. And anyone that comes to me, I shall in no wise cast out. So today, if you feel like you've done too much, or if you're too far gone, or if you've, you, you, you've slipped a little bit and fell down, yeah. know that Jesus is right there. Yeah. 
Amen. And he will in no wise cast you out. Amen. He is the bread of heaven. Now, now, when Jesus is talking to these people after he's told them uh, uh, all of these things, in John, again, chapter 6, verse 27, Jesus talks about a seal as well. He says, don't work for the food that perishes, but for the food that lasts for eternal life, Amen. which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal of approval upon him. There's that authenticity. The Father approved Jesus Christ because Jesus was God. You know, he, he, he is God. He is living and he hears us. And he tells those people, he says, you know what? You, you believe because you were filled by the physical substance. But he says, what about the spiritual substance? Yeah. He says that's that's what Jesus is really trying to get through to him. Now, long story short, these people that spent this time walking 14 miles around there, they didn't get another miracle. Jesus told them no. He said, no, you, I, I've already done this. You are not going to get another miracle. He says, you know, well, where is your faith? He says, you've got to have faith. I've already shown you that I'm the bread of life and that I will not cast anyone out that is drawn to me. Now the Holy Spirit, that is how God draws people yes. to him. Even to this very day, yes. when you go and when, when, when you're talking to somebody at a football game, when you're speaking to a loved one uh, about your struggles, when you link that into Jesus Christ, there is a draw there that you don't even recognize yes. and yes. don't even know the gravity of it this side of heaven. Now, when we get to see how things are uh, on the other side, I, I do. I believe that we will have a completely different understanding yeah. of how all the inner workings of prayer and, 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 and testimony and witnessing, all of that comes into play. All the dominoes are connected, yeah, if you will. We are members one to another. Amen. And we're all in the same body of Christ. Yes, we are. That's how you can walk up to somebody who is a Christian. And if they're a true Christian, again, if they, got, if they got more than just a sign in the yard, you can walk up to this person and not know them at all and have a wonderful conversation yes, and experience yes. with them, a fellowship with them. And that fellowship, again, brings us in community with one another and strengthens our faith. Yes. That's how God works. This is, this is how the, the authenticity of what has happened in you, it's an outward change, of an, uh, it's an outward appearance of an inward change. Yes. Right? That's what it is. Your outward actions are different, not because we're saved by works. You can never do enough good things in your life right. to make right the wrong of sin. You cannot. There's nothing we can do. We have sinned against a living and almighty, righteous and holy God. Yes. Yes. That is why Jesus came. Yes. He didn't come so that we had a license to sin. That's not what he did. No. He came so that we may experience God's grace. Yes. Mm -hmm. We were created to worship God. Yes. And when we do this, again, we will have authority, authenticity, security, and ownership. A lot more than just a sign in the yard. So this this, this seal right here that Jesus has, he's he has the authority uh, to do so. Now this Holy Spirit, this this inward change right here that that has now been put inside your spirit and and, and light is radiating out from you. you your, your your days become more joyful. Your 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 minds become more peaceful. Your self-control begins to dominate your life. Amen. Yes. And you don't even realize it. You don't even realize it. It's, you look back, you look at the day and you focus on what's going on today and you'll miss it. You'll miss the beauty of what God's doing. But if you look at the total, if you look at the big picture of things and, and see where you plug into God's plan in this world, in this time, Man, there's nothing more inspiring than that. Amen. There is nothing more inspiring to know that you are used by God and that your life matters. Yes. You have not been forgotten. You have not been forsaken. And He has not left you. He is with us. Praise God. Amen. So this, this, this inheritance that we have right here, uh, this down payment, is only, only a, a, a glimpse of what we will feel when we get to heaven. Praise God. Now, Having the seal of God. Now we've talked about uh, uh, ownership and, and authenticity. So now turn with me a couple of chapters uh, later into uh, Ephesians chapter 4, if you will. Now Paul is going to start talking uh, uh, about authenticity. He's going to start talking about an authentic change of your life. Not just 
uh, putting a sign in your yard, but He's going to start talking about things in your life that will change to, to validate your faith and to strengthen your resolve. Persevere and hold on, uh, as He would say. But this man is in prison. Paul is in prison in shackles when he's writing this. Blows my mind when I think of just, I mean, he's the best Christian of all time. Best Christian of all time. Paul was a man that persecuted the early church, was a killer, was a ruthless man. And I firmly believe that that, that is something that bothered Paul his entire life. I really do. You can, you can kind of sense that when you read Paul's writings because he always comes back to either a thorn or, or some kind of, of, of thinking aspect. And Paul is about to touch on this as well, that, it, that his thoughts is something that the devil was, was literally, it was a messenger of Satan mm -hmm. that God did not let him uh, get rid of. It kept him humble because of his life, because of all the yeah. things that he'd seen and hearing these heavenly hosts speaking of words that we're not even allowed to know. Mm -hmm. Man! So picking up in, in, in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, starting in verse 17. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having, the, uh, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. So right there, Paul touches on two things. He says that he, he keys to their thinking and ties that to their heart. Mm -hmm. Jesus calls this the light. Your eyes are the light of the soul. Anything that comes in affects your mind. And in your mind, affects your heart. Yes. 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 The unseen is, is what we should focus on, not the seen. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. Your, your problem is not people. Every single thing that takes place in our life has a spiritual origin. Yes. Every single one of them. Yes. Uh, it starts and, and is ordained in, in the high places. Mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, forces of spiritual wickedness and darkness that, 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 that lobby to attack you every single day. Mm -hmm. But when you have the seal of God, you are protected, praise God. Now no longer does the enemy have rights to you. Uh, in John chapter 1 it says the darkness does not comprehend the light. They can't even understand it. That, you know, one time you were fitted as a, ves a vessel of wrath, and now you are a vessel of God's glory. Amen. Praise God. That's what the Holy Spirit does. That's what He does in your life. Uh, he changes your thinking, and then He changes your heart. And now I, all of this change inside of you is going to reflect through your actions. Yes. It's tangible. Yes, you can it see it. Not that we're saved by works, but again, our works will be different. Faith without works is dead, is what yes. James says. He, he says faith without works is dead. And he, he says to use all of this and give glory to God. All of yes. your tribulations, all of your struggle, all of that. It's like a giant cake that God is using. He, he'll, he'll put in a little suffering here. He'll put in a little tribulation there. And then he's going to bake that cake. And why does he bake it? He bakes it so he gets rid of our impurities. Yes. Just like when you purify gold and silver, you heat it up, and as it gets hotter, the impurities rise yes. to the top. That's what God does with suffering, pain, tribulation, yes. even good things. God uses that to humble us Amen. and keep us focused. Yes. And that's 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 who the Holy Spirit is. Yes. Did you know you could grieve the Holy Spirit? You can make yes. him you can make him grievous towards you, and that's something we don't want to do. No. We'll talk about why here in a minute. But keep going with me in chapter four. In chapter four. Uh, and now Paul is, is going to talk about it in verse uh, uh, twenty two. And this is how he's going to tie it in to how the Christian faith, how if you have been changed by the Holy Spirit, when He touches you, He's going to give you some tangible things that you can see that are going to start to, 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 to permeate through your, throughout your life. In verse 22, he says, that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. There it is again. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. You have, you have been, that spirit inside of you, that, that, that good now that is inside of you, darkness is gone. Jesus has, has allowed you to drop the shackles, the pain, the fear, all of that confusion. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter, four, or chapter 14, verse 33, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Yes. Yes. God 
God is not here to confuse you. If things don't make sense in your mind, God created logic. God created morality. Things happen in our universe logically because God created them that way. If something doesn't make sense, God created us to worship Him, but He also, again, gives us sound mind. We can see those things. And if something's not making sense, sense then you need to pour out every bit of focus, everything that you've got into that area that doesn't make sense, and then find out why it's not. Yes. And with the Holy Spirit, and James, he says that anybody that lacks wisdom, let them ask God. Amen. With a humble heart. If you have something that is bothering you, something that you do not, just cannot understand, and, and it just keeps uh, just keeps welling up, keeps popping up, and you don't know what it is, go to God with it. Yes. Honestly, go to God with it and fall upon your knees mm -hmm. and ask Him to show you. And He will. Yes, he he will. will show you. Jesus says, I'm not in no wise cast any of my children. He says, I know them. You know what I mean? I give them eternal life. Praise God. Man, man. So, so putting on this old man, and here, here's another part of this too, with this seal of God, Again, it's more than just a sign we stick in our yard. We have to do some things too. That's right. Because the Holy Spirit, God will not be a part of any kind of sin. So, so the demons and, and spiritual attacks, they ride lies. They ride uh, uh, all of these things. It's sin in general. If it's there in your life, that is where the, the, the enemy will attack. Yes. He's very focused. He's a good shot. Yeah. He flings fiery arrows at us all the time. But... If we do these things, then we will have the new man, which is created in righteousness and true holiness. And in verse 25, wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man with his neighbor, for we are members one to another. Man, ain't you ever noticed that, that Christians just seem to be in a better mood? You ever seen? I talk, I talk, I talk to atheists. I talk to Hindus. I talk to Muslims, and and, and every single different worldview, if you will. It seems that that, that it just they had, they ain't got no hope. They have no joy. You know, like if you think that all that this is all there is, and that when this is over, no matter if you live for a day or a hundred more years from now, if you think that this is all there is, it is easy for the enemy to snatch away your hope. That's right. Yeah. But we have hope unlike any other. Yes, we we have hope yeah. in that resurrection, man. Yeah. We have hope yeah. that just like Jesus was resurrected in His glorious new body, we too will have a glorious new physical body yeah. on that day of resurrection. Uh, when that last trumpet sounds, praise God, and that sky cracks open, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yeah. Can you imagine seeing that? Can you imagine being that group of people right there that, that had done everything in their power to discredit God their entire life and seeing all, I mean, just the, the graves open up, the sea open up, everything opening up and the dead in Christ rise first. And then after that, then you have the living believers who are also taken. Now, oh no. Now you, oh no, now, now, but now it's too late, you see. Now it's like the, 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 the door that, that Noah had. It said that, that God raised the door. Noah did. It said that God raised the door, and what did God do? God sealed it. God put his seal on it. And, and see, just like that time right there, there was, there was seven days right there where, where nothing came. Everybody thought Noah was nuts. The door comes up, God seals it, nothing. Even Noah goes to God in prayer, and he's just like, Okay, Lord, is this, I mean, what's going on here? Yeah. And then that first drop of water fell. And all of Noah's family were baptized and cleansed through water. There's the other part of this. The, the, the ownership part, we have tangible things uh, that we do. And just like um, it says in, in Romans chapter 4 that... that uh, uh, the, the, the sign of circumcision was the seal of God's people to Abraham. We have that too. It's called baptism. Mm -hmm. We do certain things that are seals and signs and show that we are God's people as well. Mm -hmm. It's more than a sign. It's more than just saying, hey, yes, I belong to Jesus. There's things that we do in this walk that validate that, yeah. that strengthen that, that have spiritual implications. And if you think that your entire life is merely physical, so focus on that seal of God and focus on getting that seal on you. In the, in the word right here where it talks about the seal, it says the seal will be placed right here between your eyes. 
That's awesome because when you when you pair that up to Paul's description of the armor of God, he says, put on the helmet of salvation. And he ties that and, and taking up, taking up the, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So that helmet of salvation protects your mind. And he gives you the only weapon you need. And that's the Word of God. That all, all of culture will begin to devour itself because God said the times would get this way. Yeah. He said that men's heart would wax cold. Yeah. He said that society would get to a point to where all they did would worship gold and silver and, yeah. and yeah. sexual immorality yeah. Yeah. And, and all of these things. God says this in His Word. Yeah. And that is where we're at. Yeah. That is where we're at. Right, and, 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 and there are the Bible is the only thing, the only uh, book to where it makes promises that are still being unfolded today. Yeah. Still being unfolded today. Yeah. Uh, now, now, now this, this seal that we talk about, there, there's also a place in God's Word where there's a seal that was put on by man. <clears throat> Pontius Pilate. He sealed something, uh, put a seal on it by himself, uh, the tomb, if you will. Uh, after Jesus was crucified and Joseph of Arimathea, he puts him in the rich man's tomb. All of the Jews go to Pontius Pilate. And they say, we need you to do everything to secure this tomb. Because remember, while he was still alive, he said on the third day, uh, you destroy this temple and in three days I shall raise it back up again. So they, to they tell Pontius Pilate, we need you to do everything you can to secure that tomb. So what does pa Pilate do? He puts two men on it, two soldiers. But he does something more than that. He says he, he puts a seal on the tomb. And, and they put all of their security, all of their hope, all of their trust that seal. Well, well, in three days, that seal was destroyed. Praise God. The Almighty God of the universe, one of His angels descended, an earthquake happened, the seals exploded from the inside, and this 12 foot tall, 3 foot thick stone was moved out of the way, and the angel was sitting on top of it. What's up? Oh, was that? Was that a seal? Oh, yeah. That was by man. It doesn't matter to me. God trumps man every single time. Every single time. The righteousness of God will destroy all of man's idols. All of it will be burned up. Every single bit of it. All of it. So how does that affect us today? Where does that, where does that come into, in, into play today? Turn with me now to Revelation. Chapter 9. Nine? Chapter 9. Yes, ma'am. Revelation chapter 9. And any time that we talk about prophecy, prayed hard and long over this thing, and, 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 and I try not to bring anything out that I don't feel is true. I feel this is true. And I feel that it lines up perfectly. So why is it so important that we have this seal of God upon us in everything that we do, every word that we speak, every action we take? Because there's a time coming ladies and gentlemen, to where if you are not sealed by the Almighty God of the universe, you are going to experience turmoil and tribulation unlike any in, in our history of humanity. Mm -hmm. Unlike any. So Revelation chapter 9. Now John, let's just catch up right here. John is having a vision. He has been transported to heaven and he is seeing these things unfold at the end of time and, and how they will come about. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. That star that fall, fell from heaven, that's Satan. That's Satan. Jesus talks about it a little later. He says it looked like a bolt of lightning. God, God didn't just push him out. No, God said, get out of here, dude. You ain't had, no, no. No, you're out of here. He cast him down to earth, man. But right here, we find out I saw a star fall from heaven to earth and was given to him a, the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Now, we are going to be talking about a place this morning in the world called CERN 
Switzerland. And after this is over, I want you to use the uh, uh, technology that you have and look this up. Uh, because if anything else, you will at least know that this is, this at least pairs up with this uh, very, very closely. And some people, that's what it takes. It takes them actually seeing God's Word being enacted out in a physical world uh, that we live in before they actually come to their knees and say, Lord, please, yes. please keep me from this. I don't want to be a part of this. Because as we read Revelation, remember in verse 1, we find out that this is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. All of this is to reveal Jesus Christ yeah. and to bring the people of earth back into a relationship with him. That's what it is. God is not being bitter. God is not pouring out all of this wrath to kill us, to destroy us. He's doing it because that's all that, That's all these people will respond to. Yeah, yeah. Time has gotten so evil and they have, re they have rejected God completely. So God is reaching down and he's strutting his stuff and he's allowing these things to take place and then he gives three different woes throughout all of these things. A pause, if you will. The first woe is past. The second woe is past. All the... So after all of this turmoil and tribulation, you'll have a woe. You'll have a brief pause in the destruction for repentance, for people to, to, to at least have the opportunity to come to God because we serve a just and a righteous God, praise Amen. Amen. So, this bottomless pit that was opened the sun and the air that came out of it was darkened. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth had power. And it commanded, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not what the seal of God on their foreheads. This, this area in CERN, okay, back to that. This area in CERN, it, it, ta it, it takes place in Switzerland and in France, okay? All right? It, it's, it's 300 feet below the Earth's surface, 17 miles long. It's a giant circle, and at each apex of the circle, there's a little loop, like a six. Another little loop, like a six. Then on this end, another little loop, like a six. The symbol itself literally looks like three sixes stacked mm -hmm. upon each other. And what they do is, is they have, a, it's called a large hadron, a hadron collider, LHC is what it's called. And they are trying to recreate the Big Bang. That's what they're trying to do. They try to use the same temperatures, the same pressures, and what they do is, is they slam protons into each other from opposing sides using high energy. And when they slam into each other, they call this particle the God particle because it, it, it was, it was uh, uh, originally um, theorized off of a physicist um, named Higgs boson. So they call the Higgs boson the God particle. And what this particle does is it, it is the, the, the particle that discerns what has mass and what doesn't. Like light, for instance, doesn't have any mass, but people do. This particle is what is out there in, 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 I'm not a physicist at all, but this particle is what determines what has mass and what doesn't. So they take this God particle that they have and they shoot it down both ends with high energy and slam them into each other. And what do they do? They open a portal and they create this new material called antimatter or dark matter. Now this stuff, one grain of this stuff is four times more powerful than the bomb they dropped on Hiroshima. Four times. Now, another thing about this is, is this substance, this dark matter, as they uh, have begun to create this stuff, spiritual things begin to happen. Admiralities that people started to see demons, apparitions, spirits. All of this stuff started to happen as these men, these scientists... Proclaim that they are just trying to study the way God made mm -hmm. the earth. When in all actuality, we know that that is not <clears throat> the case. Now, as we, uh, another reason that this sticks out to me, this place in CERN, is these locusts come up out of this abyss. And this is the largest machine created on planet earth. The, 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 the epitome of man's marvel. But in Revelation chapter 9, Verse 11, this is the part. And again, when you look it up, you will see. And they had a king over them, 
which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, which means destruction. But in the Greek tongue hath the name Apollyon, which means the destroyer. Do you want to know what sits outside of this place in CERN? There's an altar built to the Hindu god of Shiva. It's a circle, and Shiva has four arms on him. And he, do you want to know what they call him in the, in the Hindu? They call him the god of destruction. Mm-hmm. That is sitting right outside of this place in CERN that is actually trying to, and it looks like a giant shaft. And in some translations, it says that the, 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 the devil that, that had the key, he opened up the shaft to the abyss. This whole place looks like a giant shaft, and they literally have the God of destruction sitting out front. Mm -mm. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be this year. But eventually this place is going to have some sort of accident to where smoke is going to come up, and it will blot out the sun. And they will release the gates of hell upon mankind. Mm -hmm. That is a promise. That is a promise. And that is why it's so important. Again, I ask you to check me. Go and look it up. See for yourselves. And when you do, that will create a new fervent attitude for making sure you have the seal of God. Because that is the only defense you have. That's it. Technology will not help you. No. People will not help no. you. Smart. There is a time, yes, intellectual uh, capacity will not help you. You will not be able to think your way out of this no. situation. No. Only God. God. And having his seal. This way when these these beings come out of the abyss. And they come to attack. You'll have that seal of God. Not only on your forehead. But your entire home will be saved. God makes promises to our families. Through our churches. And he protects us. As we walk through this life. So as we go through this week. Again. Look at these things that are beginning to take shape. The Bible is the only book in history that gives us these things that, and everybody says this, everybody says this. They say, oh, well, this generation is no different. Uh, every generation has had this, this, this thing where revelation lines up. Well, uh, that, that, that facility in CERN did not start until 2015. The God particle, by the way, was found in 2012. The same year that genetic testing also uh, increased. The, the, the CRISPR-Cas9, the ability to go in and alter the gene and the genetic code happened in 2012. You, you start to see these things line up, and this is not like a generation any, uh, in any other time in history. And, and, and here is the thing. As Christians, we should not revel in that. No. We should have a compassionate heart. Yes. Everyone that does yes. not have that seal on their head. Amen. It should make us tremble in fear. Yes. And, and it, should, it, it, should, it should literally affect us in a way that we do not want to see anyone go down this road. We don't want to see anyone persecuted. We want to see everyone uh, uh, saved. Yes. And want to see them get repentance and, yes. and, and come to God with a, with a fervent heart <clears throat> and to be welcomed in with open arms. Yes. Praise yes. God. That seal of God, man, authority, authenticity, ownership, and uh, uh, yeah, the seal of God. That is, that is what we must have as we go throughout this life. And today, if you have not <coughs> accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, <coughs> if you feel like you've fallen away from Him and need to recommit, I want to invite you to come and do that as I say this closing prayer. Do not delay. Because there is a time coming. Like I said, it may not be today. It may not be this year. But one day with God is a thousand years, and a thousand years is but a day. You can change on the drop of a hat. And, and later in that very chapter right there, he says that all of these things are literally allocated to a specific hour, day, month, and year. So God knows exactly when this is going to take shape. It's not like God's up there guessing. No, no, God knows exactly when these things are going to happen. So again, don't delay. If you've got somebody out there that needs to know Christ, tell them you love them. And God will open up that doorway so you can, you can, you can shed a little light in their life. Praise God. 
So again, if you want to, come and, and, and give yourself to the Lord. And as we close, please join with me in a moment of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ's name, Lord, we come before you and we say thank you. Lord, thank you for pulling us together, Lord, for a time such as this. Lord Jesus, we are strengthened by each other's presence, Lord. Our, our faith continues to grow, Lord, and, and we say thank you for that. Lord, we ask for you to, to seal us, Lord. We ask for you to, 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 to provide us conviction in our heart, Lord Jesus, and, and show us those things in our lives that, that keep us separated from you. Lord, allow us to, to see them, Lord, and allow us to, to lovingly and obediently move in the direction uh, towards you and push those out, Lord God, so that your light and your love and your life may shine into us, Lord. We, we know that there is a time coming, Lord Jesus. We don't know when. Only God knows, Lord. But we know there's a time coming, Lord. And, and again, we ask for you to protect us, Lord. Protect our families, Father. Protect our friends, Lord Jesus. And, and anyone in this room, Lord God, anyone that can hear these words today, Father, that does not know you, Lord, we ask for conviction. Yes. Yes. Please, with your Holy Spirit, prick their hearts, Lord, and, and allow them to, to just know that the time is drawing near, Lord. And we, 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 we anticipate your return, Lord, and, and we cannot wait to see you face to face, Lord Jesus. So, so again, thank you for this life. Thank you for this light. And Lord, thank you for this love. Because we know that love ties everything to you. Lord. So, so allow our love for one another to grow. I love for you to grow. And Lord Jesus, just allow, uh, allow us to, to be used according to your purpose. Lord, we are willing and we are able. And we, we just, again, we want to be about your business, Lord Jesus. So please protect us in this coming week, Father. Keep us safe. Reveal your will to us, Lord. Show us where to go, uh, what to say, what to do, Lord. And, and again, just use us according to your purpose. And Lord, allow our minds to be renewed, our hearts to be set free, and the shackles to be blown off of us in Jesus Christ's name, Lord. We ask to, we ask to just get up out of the bondage, Lord, and, and to draw near to you. Yes. Thank you again for this day, Lord, and thank you for everything you've done in our lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right. Bam. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, man. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, man. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor.